Hello friends, we are here today in John chapter 20. Now this is a very important chapter in the book. This is the chapter where John basically says this is, this is the purpose for the entire book. It's kind of cool how he spells it right out. At the very end of this chapter, he says that Jesus did many other signs, things that are not written in this book. But I have told you these things so that you may, may believe that you may believe in him and know that in him you have eternal life. So what happens in the beginning of this chapter? That's an interesting question. First, he's raised from the dead. <laughs> Pretty important. You know, Jesus died in the last chapter, and in this chapter, he's raised. So Mary went and told Peter and John, and so it said that Peter and John ran over and it's funny to me that we you know this is the book of John we know this and whenever John is referring to himself he calls himself the other disciple and I feel like that's a that's a sense of uh, humility but at the same time he's like now I just want to point out that the other disciple reached the tomb before Peter did and you know in the last chapter he says you know, the other disciple, he walked right in the door and let Peter in. But Peter, he came in the door and said he didn't know Jesus. So I kind of feel like there's this, like, interesting, fun sibling rivalry between John and Peter. But they get, they get there to the tomb. And John gets there first. And they go in. Now, it's interesting that they say they went in and they saw that the linens were all folded. And I, I want to point out, too, that this reads like something that really happened. Like, it said that, that they, like, crouched in the door. You know, it shows the size of the door. It, it's, it's showing that, that it was folded, but, but the thing that covered his head, it was folded, and it was in a different place. Like, these are things that, that don't really need to be said, but that, but that are, because that is exactly what they remember. So, he sees the shroud and, and, the, and the headpiece and it's all folded and they believe. Well, what's interesting is that Mary, who was with them, she stays outside of the tomb and she's crying. Interesting that she doesn't believe. So that I think is interesting about this chapter. I think that's the bones of the chapter. It's about two people who don't, don't really believe that Jesus has risen. And so, First, you have Mary, and she is crying, and then she talks to Jesus, thinking that he's the gardener. And then finally, Jesus is like, Mary. And she looks up at him, and she's like, teacher, and she's holding on to him. She's not letting him go. You know, she's saying, <laughs> she's saying, you know, Lord, you know, she, she calls him Rabboni, and she puts her arms around him. And I, I'm led to believe that after a while, he was like, look, you can't, <laughs> you can't hold on to me forever. You know, I'm, I'm going to have to go again, but so she goes by it and tells the others, I have seen the Lord. You know, not just the shrouds, but him himself. Now, later on, it says that they were in this room and the door was closed. It was locked because they didn't want the, the Jews to come in and, and take them all out. But, but Jesus comes in the door and, and he speaks to all of them. Thomas is not there. And so he hears about it. And everybody else, you know, tells him, tells him, you know, we've seen him. And he says, unless I put my hands in his hands and I feel that thing in his side, you know, where, the, where they stuck the spear in him, unless I see those wounds and I see him, I will never believe. Interesting to me that he says, I will never believe. You know, I feel like if all of my best friends are telling me that they saw him, I might believe. But he's saying, no, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a fool here. I won't believe unless I see him. And a week later, they're in the room, and Jesus comes right to him, and he says, put your hands, put your hands here. You know, put your, put your hands where, where the spear got me. You know, see and believe, and he looks at Jesus and he says my Lord and my God 
And that's saying two separate things. One, he's, he's acknowledging that Jesus is God. But he's also acknowledging that he is his Lord. That, that Jesus is the Lord of his life. That, that he not only believes that he is God, but that he is making him Lord of his life. Now, why is this significant to us? It's very significant. Because, you know, there's a part earlier in this book where Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman. He says, you know, there's a time, a time is coming where you will believe in God in spirit and in truth. Now, if you've been following with me all the way through these books, I, I, I'm constantly noticing this spiritual sight that God gives everyone. You know, there's this mix between the spirit and the, and the truth. And it's not that you need, you know, all spiritual sight. You know, God doesn't want us to just have spiritual sight. He wants us also to trust in God in truth because it really happened. You know, this is, God is making, making it very clear that he does not mind when people say, I want to see the evidence. So when we come to God, we need to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's why John's writing this whole book, you know, so that we may know these things and that we may believe that Jesus is God and that we may have eternal life. What's interesting is that to all the people of those, you know, religions out there that claim that Jesus never claimed to be God or that the Bible doesn't say that Jesus is God, you have... You have Thomas here talking right to Jesus, and he says, My Lord and my God. And Jesus gives him a blessing. You know, and I've heard (laughs) I've heard it say that uh, that Jehovah's Witnesses claim that oh that's not what he was saying. He was saying, Oh, oh, oh my Lord, my God. As if as if he's blaspheming right in front of Jesus. You know, and (laughs) a DA Carson points out that that it doesn't account for the word and there. You know, my Lord and my God. It's not, it doesn't flow like something he's just casually saying, like he's just surprised. He is saying, my God, and Jesus is saying, yes. Yes. He's not criticizing him for, for blaspheming because he is just stating something that is absolutely true. So, that... That, that is the point, so that we may, that we may know the, the truth and that we may believe in him and have eternal life through him. So that is John chapter 20. Have a great day.